guys, White Tiger here again, and this is another Wi-Fi battle, and this is another person I met on the Pokemon Wi-Fi Zap chat. If you haven't guessed, I do get a lot of my battles from there, well, at least lately, anyway. Um, anyway, about the battle, it's against a guy called Geordie. He was asking for a battle. I accepted. It's an OU battle, really fun, so I hope you enjoy. Uh, not much more to say, so let's just start the battle here. Now, you're challenged by Geordie, and I send in my Queen, which is a new Pokemon of mine. And he goes into Inferno. Now he's going to go for the obvious fake out. It's not going to do much because the Queen is a pretty bulky-ish Pokemon. And I'm going to go for the Stealth Fox here, predicting him to switch out. Which he does, which is good because I get the free Stealth Fox. And now he's gone into Juraishi, which I'm thinking it must be a special one because a physical one's not going to do too much to a Nida Queen. So he does go for the Psychic, which does reveal he is a special one. But I know I can take one Psychic, so I'm going to go straight for the Earthquake. See what it's going to do. And it does around half, um, and after lefties unfortunately won't be a two hit KO. Not that it matters because if I stayed in he would go for the psychic. But I do switch now, go into my Kermit to take the psychic, but he predicts that, goes for the sub. So that's good on his part. Now he is going to go for the Calm Mind here, which is... Uh, everyone loves Calm Mind Joyce. I have one myself, but... You know, it's not fun when you're facing one, is it? Now I go for the Surf, after his Calm Mind, it ain't going to kill his sub because of the plus one special defense. Now he's going to go for the Thunderbolt here, and my Kermit is very bulky, so it's going to take it pretty well. And I'm going to go for the Seismic Toss, no, it's going to finish off the sub now. And now I have a problem because I cannot one hit a sub. With Seismic Toss, because of his um, max HP, which he will have, he will have 404 HP, so a substitute that has a quarter of your health will have 101 HP, meaning every Seismic Toss will take 100 out of 101 HP of the sub away, leaving it on 1 HP. So I'm going to have to 2 hit each sub, but I do not want to let this thing get a free sub with the Carmines up as I switch out. So I'm going to keep going at it here, switching between Surf and my Seismic Toss in case he decides to switch out to anything. And he's getting a couple of Carmines up. But I just do not want this thing setting up on me completely. So he goes for a sub here. Now he's not going to have enough health to go for another one after this. So one seismic toss here. Leaves it on one HP. He's going to get a Thunderbolt off in a minute. Uh, yep, yeah, just now. He's got the Thunderbolt off here. And now I'm going to be able to finish the sub off. Which is going to be good because I know he can't set up another one in a minute. And yet the surf there it finishes it off. Now he can't set one up as I said. And... Uh, I'm thinking whether to switch out, expecting his obvious Thunderbolt, but I decide to leave Kermit in just in case he does anything. And he does go for the Thunderbolt, and that will kill off my Kermit. So that's not too bad. I did manage to stop him setting up the free sub. So now I'm going to go into my new, another new Pokemon called Hot Chicken, which is my Scarf Blaziken. It's actually a special Blaziken because everyone is usually physical, so it's sort of to catch you by surprise. Now I go for the obvious Fire Attack, which is my Flamethrower in this case. And it hits the incoming star me, and it actually does a heck of a lot, but it's a crit. So that's a bit uh, a bit lame there, sorry about that. Now I know he's probably going to be Scarf since he switched in, and he goes for the recover on my switch. So I'm thinking, oh, I guess it's not Scarf then. So I probably could have outsped it uh, and finished it off perhaps, but I wasn't sure even if I did outspeed whether, he could, whether, it, whether it could finish it off. So I'm just going into my Tequeen as a death fodder here, and it does die here, so that's my Tequeen dead. And uh, his star is almost at full health now after the recover and everything. So I'm going to go into my starlight here, knowing that it can take anything it wants to do, pretty much. He's going to go for the Thunderbolt. Not quite sure why. Maybe predicting the switch or thinking it will maybe get in the power hacks. But I'm just going to go straight for the um, Calm Mind here. And with the plus one special defense, he knows he cannot hurt this thing. And I'm going to go for the Taunt as he switches into Gengar in case he decided to recover still me. And I'm pretty sure I can take whatever this thing wants to do moderately well after the plus one special defense. And he goes for the Shadow Ball here. And it actually does more than I thought. And I only just survive at 13 HP. So it's a good thing I got that Calm Mind up. And I'm going to go straight for the Thunderbolt again. And it will KO the Gengar at this point. So that's good. His Gengar's dead. And my Starlight's still alive. So looking quite good here. And he goes into a Starmie. And I know this thing isn't Scarf now. But uh, I don't really want to switch into anything, so I stay in, go for the Thunderbolt, and luckily he did go for the Rapid Spin there. And I'm not sure whether he thought he would kill me or whether I would switch, but I do survive and I do kill him off. So that's awesome for me. I did lose the Stealth Fox, which will help him out a bit, but I would much rather have the Sami dead. So that's good. Now he goes into his Metagross. I know I can outspeed, so I'm going to go for this uh, Focus Blast. 
no it's neutral high power got plus one so it's going to do a lot does about three quarters which is good and he's just going to finish me off with the grass knot so my starlight is dead and his metagross is pretty low so i can go into my hot chicken and again i'm going to go for the obvious flamethrower don't want to over predict as he brings in his infernape and this is going to do a fair bit because it is a frail pokemon but yeah so he's going for the fake out here and I know I'm not going to take much from that, so I'm just going to stay and go for another flamethrower. Because uh, I'm pretty sure that Hot Chicken can wall this thing pretty well. And close combat, it's pretty powerful, it's not going to do too much. Or well, it does a lot obviously, but it's not going to kill me, so that's good because of the resistance. And I'm going to go for the uh, another flamethrower, hopefully I can kill it off, but he decides to switch into his Dragonite. And his Dragonite is going to take that pretty damn well. After a crit and a burn, which was really, really, really haxy, so I'm really sorry about that. That was really lame, but what can I do? Um, yeah, so he's going to go for the heal bell as I switch into my pain. So that's good on his part. I didn't expect a heal bell, but at least he's got that burn off now, so that's pretty good. And my pain's going to get his toxic orb here, and I'm going to go straight for the facade. Now it's going to pretty much hit anything for a lot of damage after the um, guts and poison and everything. And it will kill off his incoming Jirachi, even though it's resisted, because of its pure power. Heracross is pretty beastly with its uh, guts ability now. And I know this Infernape's going to outspeed me and probably go for the fake out, so I go into my hot chicken. And I do actually take the fake out there, which is good. And I'm going to go again straight for the flame, for I do not want to overpredict, And I just know it can hit anything because of the stab and everything. And it hits his Dragonite again taking him quite low now and I don't really want to switch into anything so I'm just going to go straight for the flamethrower again wh uh, whittle this thing down as much as I can before he dies but he does have the roost so that sort of puts that plan down and I'm going to have to switch out in a minute because he's just going to be able to roost me out of my flamethrowers and well not out of my flamethrowers but I'm not going to be able to hurt him enough so I go into my pain knowing it can hopefully take a dragon claw or whatever we wanted to do there perhaps an earthquake and I do take it pretty well and I'm going to go for the facade again here, knowing it's going to hit everything hard. And he goes into his Metagross. And this thing does resist it and that does have some good natural defense. So it's not going to quite kill it there. But I do outspeed it. So it's not too much of a problem. And I'm just going to go for another facade. And he switches back into his Dragonite. So if the facade's going to hit that, it's going to hit it very hard there. But I don't think it quite KOs. And nope, it does survive in red. But I've got one more hit in me. And I know I can outspeed the Dragonite and the Metagross. So it's safe to go for another one, and it will KO his Dragonite, because he decides to leave it in his death fodder. And my pain will go down, so that was a good job, pain, you did well this battle. Now I'm going to go into my hot chicken, again, safe switch in, it has a scarf, but he goes into his Infernape. I know it has a fake out, but I decided to stay in, sacrifice my hot chicken, so I can now send in my last, which is my protect. And this is actually a banded Twiller, and it's going to be able to kill off his last two Pokemon, Infernape and the Metagross, because they're both on low HP. And as you will see, yep, that's his uh, Infernape dead, and now his Metagross, and he will die to a Brave Bow, because it does obviously outspeed, because Swell is very, very fast. So that was an awesome game, really, really close there. I did get a bit haxy, may have been a bit different if I did leave it there. So good game, hope you enjoyed, see you later guys.